All right, Mayhemers, we're back with episode two of the creation of the SS Dixon, a jet-powered tanker ship that eventually becomes an all-in-one search and destroy and maybe rescue vehicle. In this series, we walk through all of the steps to make your creations come to life, and I show you things to watch out for in areas where I screw up over and over again. Remember, kids, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents which bring you way more YouTube views than if everything worked out right in the first place. So, in the last episode, we roughed out the general hall, and in this episode, we'll actually add the jet engines and controls and go on our first voyage. Here I just clean up what I thought would be the shape of the bridge before jumping down and adding two giant propellers. These things are massive, so by putting them low in the ship, we make sure they stay in the water while also lowering our center of gravity. When adding rudders, it's important to either turn off symmetry or add in a number inverter because all of the rudders on the right half of the ship will turn in the wrong direction otherwise. I have no idea why the developers didn't make it so that certain components like rudders, rotating jets, and wheels do not mirror the rotation when placing them in mirror mode. But here we are. As you can see, without the guidelines of mirror mode, it took me a few tries to get the spacing right of the rudders. This is a really large ship. So to aid maneuverability, I'm adding in bow thrusters, starting with some small propellers on both sides of the ship that we can power using small electric motors. We can then drop in some large batteries to give us some electricity. I try to put the batteries as low in the ship as possible, and tend to put more weight in the front of the ship to counteract some of the bow lift when underway. Now we use the cross-section view to start putting the jets in place. When designing jet systems, I like to put all of my jet parts in my hotbar. Just type jet and search, and they're all labeled and come up easily. The order you assemble your jet engine in matters. It goes intake to compressor, from the compressor to combustion chamber, and from the combustion chamber to the jet turbine. Here we use a medium jet turbine. Uh, this is the one you want to use if you want to have an output shaft to drive things like props, generators, or rotors. And then finally, the exhaust. For our ship, I'm going to bypass the exhaust and just end at the jet turbine. Everything is joined together using the jet ducting. Straight, curve, offset, and T-jet ducts work just like large pipes. So we can drag down our intakes from top of the ship down into what will become the engine room. Unlike other types of engines, it doesn't seem to matter how long your intake is from the engine as long as they're connected by ducting. Turning off the cross-section view revealed that I messed up with my ducting placement causing us to miss one of the ducts. This isn't a problem, just undo everything and place the ducts again. This is also a good time to remind ourselves to add the air intake fan on top. This is the first ship that I haven't forgotten these little fans. Spawn the ship, see that it doesn't work, and then have to go back into the workbench and add them in again. I don't know what's wrong with me. I never put them in place. Now that this is fixed, let's work our way back from the giant props with a set of gears and clutches. Arrows pointing away from the engine increase torque, and arrows pointing towards the engine increase RPS or speed. I'm not sure what we'll need for this creation, so I put one going each way. We'll use one of the gearboxes to also become a reverse gear later on. The gears I'm using here have been replaced by the new modular gears that come in 5x5, 3x3, and 1x1 sizes. These gears can either use a modular clutch or regular clutch. Using a modular clutch on modular engines and a regular clutch, like the rectangular one we're using here, on all other engines. If you try to use a modular clutch on a jet engine or a large engine or any of the regular engines, um, they just don't work. In a later episode, we'll replace these gears with the new gearboxes. I'll put a link to that in this section. Now from the gearboxes, we continue along and use a series of T-pipes and angles to connect to three turbines per side. Be careful here. The arrow should point towards the exhaust, away from the intake. In this case, we're going to build the jet turbine starting at the exhaust and moving towards the intake, so we need to make sure that the arrows are all pointing down. It's important to make sure that you do this, because uh, if they point the wrong way, it's just not going to work. We're then going to use a fourth turbine on each side to power our electric generators. I like to color code the pipes. Here, I'll use a yellowish orange color. When I think of this color, it reminds me of electricity. I also add a clutch so we can engage and disengage the generator. I found that running the clutch at 60% results in the most electricity being generated, but certainly not 
necessarily the best fuel efficiency. Our tanks are large enough that I'm really not concerned about efficiency. I just like to have fun and break stuff. On top of the turbine goes the combustion chambers. Again, double check the arrows to make sure that they are pointed away from the intake towards the exhaust. Each one of these needs a fuel connection, so make sure that you have those ports facing out. Now we add the compressor. Once again, keeping the arrows all pointed away from the intake. Now it's just a matter of using our ducts to connect between the jet engine and the intakes. In this cross section, we can see how the engines are connected through the ship to the intakes at the top. Now we can begin my favorite part of building, running the various fuel pipes. I find snaking pipes around the ship to be so satisfying. Here we will use bright red pipes to run their jet fuel from the combustion chambers back into the fuel tank. For maximum performance, I use large pumps and place them as close to the combustion chamber intake as possible. Adjusting the camera angle can be tricky when working in confined spaces. Hit the F key to center on the block you're looking at. The pumps can attach directly to the side of the combustion chamber. We now just need to adjust the pipe to connect it. Pumps work by taking the fluid from the small side with the dark gray pipe to the fat circular side. You can directly connect the output of the pump to the input of the combustion chamber. Now we can just continue adding the pumps. Here's where I spotted my mistake. Did you guys see it? Remember when I said the output of a pump is the big circular part? Well, I didn't connect it that way. The first pump I hooked up is backwards. No worries, we can easily solve this problem. Now we just carve away the blocks that make up the tank so we can easily see our pipe routing. I like to use exposed pipes as much as possible, but for things like this tank that need to be airtight, you need to use the enclosed pipe pieces. The pipes on the ends would collide with each other, so by using enclosed pipes we can quickly move the intake out of the way. Here we need to route some of the pipes inside the wall to give us a bit of space. Six pipes coming into the tank, ending at the floor with six fluid intakes. We're almost done. Now it's time to add the pumps and piping for the two back combustion chambers. We have lots of open space, so routing these pipes is simple. The hardest part is getting the pump orientation correct. Hmm. Can't go under or straight ahead, so up and over we go. Okay, so maybe this is a bit tighter than I thought, but we're successfully past the input shaft of the large generators, the other fuel supplies, and can come into the side of the tank. Then running the piping inside the tank, we finally add the last two intakes. Finally, seal up the holes we cut into the fuel tank and the jet turbines are successfully connected. I like the look of chamfered corners on fluid tanks, so I ease the hard corners and replace them with a 45 degree wedge. This is completely optional, but I'm always happy when I see the finished results as I go from a ship that's a rough, blocky sketch in my mind to one that's more and more refined. While we have pipes in our hot bar, we can quickly add a series of intakes and outlets for our crude oil tanks. Dragging the pipes up from the tanks allows us to quickly see where we need to make holes in the deck to bring out the pipes. Closing off the openings with enclosed straight pipes keeps the hull watertight and allows us to move on to working on the bridge. At this point in my build, I'm really excited to fire up the engines and see how the ship performs. We just need to add some doors to get in and clean up the floor so that we have room to walk around inside the ship. Ah, one thing that I almost forgot here is to seal the jet ducts. The ducts are not watertight, and if you don't wrap the entire jet duct and engine assembly with blocks, your ship will spawn flooded with seawater. It's a real shame because I love the look of exposed ducting in various jet components, but I've yet to find a way to avoid the water spawning issue. Let me know in the comments if you have any tricks. I again use the chamfered edges here to round out the hard corners on the tanks and ship interior, and then continue sealing up the various ducts and components. A final check and it looks like I have the hull sealed. Back to adding our bridge. Now I'm turning off mirror mode so that we can add steps to the top floor where our ship controls will be located. Here we will add some crew quarters in addition to the bridge. I'm just roughing in where the rooms would be and checking out how things would work. I think of this stage similarly to how an artist sketches. I try various placements and refine until I'm happy with the results. This is good enough for now. Let's add our helm, cut out some windows, and see how she'll do on the water. 
I like the look of angled windows so that you can better see over the deck, but their placement is really fiddly. I find that I have to extend our temporary blocks in order for the windows to connect and then erase them later. You can see my multiple tries at getting the windows in place as well as countersinking the ship's wheel in the wall. Eventually we have a workable window layout and can begin putting in gauges. For initial testing, I always use simple gauges and dials to avoid messing around with composite signals and microcontrollers. This is again a case of start very simple, get the basic readouts that you need, and test how things are working before adding complexity. First step is dropping in two throttles. One will control the engine RPS, and the other will control the clutches. Some toggles to turn things on, and some dials to monitor RPS, temp, speed, etc. Then I add some gauges that I can use to see how much fuel we can carry in the current levels. And now we connect things up. The throttle on the left side goes to the clutches. I connect the right hand throttle to the jet combustion chamber throttles. Then each of the dials goes to the combustion chamber RPS feed to watch the engine spin up. Now we add the left toggle to turn on all of the pumps as well as start the compressors. Holding down control allows you to continue adding things that the button should turn on without dragging and dropping from the button to each item individually. Next, I use the AD control from the wheel to hook up to all of the rotors. Finally, it's time to connect all of the electric together. I find this process so tedious, but at least you only have to do it once. The key is to make sure that every item has a path that eventually leads to a battery. We're almost there. <sighs> Looks like I forgot to add those air intakes again. Add them to the top of our jet ducts, then add some ladders on the sides so that we can actually climb into the ship without having to use no clip load. And we can spawn it in. The ship didn't sink to the bottom, so that's a good sign that we've sealed up the holes in the hull. Climbing up the steps, we can finally see out of our bridge. Start the engines and give it full throttle. Now engage the clutch and off we go. Hitting tab to go into third person view and then zooming out shows that we haven't fully sealed all of the ducting and the ship flooded. Luckily we're still very buoyant, but we'll have to make sure to finish sealing up around the jet engines and pumps. For such a large ship, we have plenty of power and two giant propellers easily lift the craft out of the water without any gearing. Let's spawn in the tsunami to see how she does in rough seas, and if it's self rights So this testing didn't go quite as well as I hoped, but luckily these are easily fixable problems, both the stability and the water within the hull. First we'll add some more batteries to the front of the boat to try and keep the nose down a bit more when in the water. We can then quickly seal around the jet engine components. We'll extend the walls around all of the pumps as well as the generators, completely sealing the entire power assembly within a cocoon. Then we can add additional batteries all along the bottom of the ship, dramatically lowering the center of gravity. Connect up all of the batteries together and we should have enough electricity to power our ship for months at a time. Time for another tsunami test. Success! Well, sort of. I didn't plan on parallel parking the boat. 
let's try it again, uh, this time just dialing up the waves and see how fast we can go. This does not look good. I didn't think uh, ships were supposed to pop wheelies. I find that wind speeds above 40 meters per second makes the game really unstable, and pretty much everything, including a brick, decides to fly. Okay, clearly we have a bit of improvements to do with stability, but we have plenty of power. One thing I don't like is how the entire bridge of the ship moves. It looks, let's be honest, like garbage. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Hit like and subscribe if you don't mind, and uh, tune in next week for more Maximum Mayhem. Thanks. Let me know in the comments what you like or don't like about this video. I read every single one of them, and I think together we're making a much better channel.